Oh, what do we have here? Guess we'll have to open it up and find out. Hello, I'm Robert, and you're welcome here in my busy little shop. On today's episode of What's My Workbench, we're going to open up that package, see what we've got in there. I think I know what it is. I'm expecting a set of pliers, uh, they're small ones, that uh, I'm going to make a sheath for. So I hope you enjoy following along. Let's see what we got here. I had a gentleman reach out to me after seeing one of my knife sheath videos and asked me to think about making a, a little pocket sheath for a set of uh, pliers here. And he was disappointed in the package that he was provided with the tools about how thick they are. I think he wants to carry it like in his front pocket. And uh, we've got, oh, not quite an inch and a half, but that's that's quite a bit to stick in the pocket, whether it's a front pocket or uh, even a, a pants pocket. So let's open it up, see what we got here. Interesting. I don't think I've ever seen uh, any pliers quite like that. Cobra. It's got a different name on it. It doesn't have a name on it. Interesting. Very uh, small set of pliers. We're uh, right at four inches by, uh, I'm gonna call it an inch and a half at its widest place. And I, I'm sure we can make it thinner, but there's quite a bit of bulk there already with the, the pliers. We're a little less than seven eighths. Um, yeah, yeah, it looks like about uh, 13 sixteenths. So by the time I get leather in there, it'll be it'll be tight, but maybe it'll make it a little more attractive too. Besides this, we talked about making the um, pocket sheath back to back. I might put them in that way. Interesting. I don't know if we can. Looking for ways to get it thinner, you know, by offset. I don't think that's worth it. Because we're going to have, uh, at least the design I'm thinking of is leather between them and then wet form on both sides. So it'll be kind of a like a card you pull out. All right, let me set up. I'll get some uh, leather out here and we'll play around with it a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna start off with a, a uglier piece here. I'm going to kind of cut some shapes. So, you know, I'm gonna use stuff I wouldn't normally use in my projects for that. And then once we get kind of an idea, then I will uh, cut a nicer piece of leather. So, First off, I gotta figure out what's the smallest I can make this. All right, so using the ruler on this side here to set a boundary one inch wide, and then I'll move it over to this side, one inch wide, three and eight, three and three eighths. Let me square this up a little bit. Let's make it three and a quarter wide, and I'll be trimming some of this off when I get it finished. This will give me a starting piece. All right, so I'm going to have a piece of leather cover up here to about this point on there. So I think I've got a good height by the time I get this wet molded to hold the pliers. I may end up trimming this back a little bit. Maybe I'll do a, a little bit of a cup there. But I need to figure out how much leather I need sideways here. So I'm just kind of eyeball this a little bit here. Imagining this was wet formed around there. I can trim off extra. What is it Don Gonzalez says? He says... 
Measure twice and stretch to fit. I think that's pretty funny. All right. So then we end up with that sheath size here. It's about right, I think. So I'm gonna say, let me, I'll cut it at one. I can, I can make it shorter. I know I start off saying this is a mock-up. Sometimes I wish I wouldn't do that because I may end up with something I like, but I can make it again. All right, so I think I'm kind of liking that. This gets trimmed off about right here. And then I'll be sewing around this. And I might start off with a pattern that I sew here, come down. Uh, and we're, we're going to make this as narrow as uh, feasible. I come down here, come around, and come up in here, back out and around. I think... I think I want to cut, yeah, I'm going to think about this a little bit. I don't know, I said I was going to think about it. I'm done thinking. Uh, it's a little narrow up here. I'm going to need to bring that cut down. this a little bit. Here's what I've got thus far. I think a little wet mold like that. These hard corners. All right, um, plenty to think on here. I'm, I'm gonna send a few pictures and ideas to my client and we'll go from there. Once I get a few answers, I'll come back and we'll talk about how we're gonna finish from here. But I thought you might be interested in seeing a little thought process going behind getting it started. All right, so I got some feedback on this from the, my client. And uh, so I, I know the direction we're going to go. We're going to use the width that we talked about here. He likes the height. We're going to do a little bit of decorative edge on that. So the first thing I'm going to do, I, I need to get the uh, strips of leather wet form uh, so that I can get those drying because that's going to be the longest time on this project probably is getting the wet form leather to dry. Uh, it's about a three ounce leather and uh, that's thin enough that that leather has to be all the way dry before I stitch this in. Otherwise, I'll end up uh, just pulling the, the thread right through that leather. So I'm going to do that, and then we'll set that aside, and then we'll work on cutting these pieces to size, and we'll do the tooling on it um, and go from there. This is thin enough leather. I can get quite a bit of stretch to it here. Okay. All right. We'll go right. 
right there. This is gonna have a natural oil finish as far as color. And I'm gonna put a coat of uh, tan coat on it, which allows the leather to be oiled through it. So the tan coat will give it some protection and uh, you can still oil it. And the gentleman does um, hydraulic work. And so he said he'll probably have oil on his hands at times and it'll get its own patina as it ages, which is a uh, kind of a cool way of seeing how it finishes out. Okay, we'll set this uh, over here as well and let that dry. So the next thing I need to do is to be to get these cut to, uh, to length. And then once I get them laminated, I can sand it and burnish it. The next thing I need to do is to um, lay out my tooling pattern on here. So I put tape on the back. This is really thin leather, so I have to be careful in tooling that. Normally you wouldn't tool something this thin, uh, but the tape will help keep the leather from being deformed. And then I just put a light crease along here to follow with my tooling. And so I'll get started here. So I'm gonna put this design here in the corner. Try to get it rotated properly. Just a little decorative corner on this. light on the cedar. You just drive a hole right through it. And then we're going to use this uh, diamond uh, basket weave here just as a border. A lot of times it's used to create, uh, as you would probably know, a basket weave design, but I'm using it as a border tool here. I'm going to have to tighten this up a little bit. It's hard on a basket weave. A lot of times you're doing a big pattern. And when you do that, any, any slight errors are kind of hidden in the maze of the whole design as opposed to here. And I'm going to run this a little bit, uh, call it wild, down here in the... Uh, pouch will cover up the uh, pattern here. He won't continue on to the pouch. And then uh, I don't want to use this textured side because it'll it'll uh, show there but I use this when I'm using it as a border to kind of clean this this run up here just a little bit. Anyway, I think that gives kind of an interesting uh, border design on there. I'm gonna set these aside, let them dry, and then come back. We've got the uh, wet form is done and it's dry. And I think it fits these two tools pretty nicely. 
The next thing I need to do is to um, create a little bit more of an opening there. And um, I mean, they need to look similar, but since the tools are a little bit different, uh, it's okay if they're slightly different as well. They're gonna be on opposite sides. You're not gonna see them at the same time. And I don't wanna get down in here too far. I'm just trying to get rid of some of like this crease here in the middle. Get rid of this hard corner here. Oh, I'm liking that. It'll be a nice friction fit, pretty tight. I'll wanna make sure I don't spread this I want that in in more because the stitching will come close and help hold that down. Okay, let's do the same for this one. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. I'm gonna compare my two heights. We're good on that. Now with this pulled around like this, it changes this angle, and I want that to be pretty straight. So I'm a, I'm going to uh, trim that off some. Now keep in mind, uh, this one at least is going to have an oil finish on it so water can get through to it. So if I need to wet form because I want to make this open up, gap open a little bit, I can do that once I get it uh, final assembly and I can do my last futzing with it. Futzing's another uh, technical leather term. All right, these are my um, center parts. And you want to be careful when you're doing this. I wouldn't pull the the leather away, I would hold the leather down flat and pull the tape off so you don't distort any of that pattern. Okay, so now we're ready for the, uh, I'll call it dry fit assembly. I think that one fits better. So what I'm gonna do is I'll lay these on here and I think, I don't wanna get it all the way up here. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look for about a half inch reveal down there and then that kind of centers it uh, visually, top to bottom, and uh, let's move it over a little bit here, side to side, like that. I'll hold this in place. Drop this one on here. Yeah, I'm liking that. Let me rotate a little bit here. And I'm just going to put a light pencil mark here and here for help me to help me line up in the same place again. Kind of feel where the outside corner is down here. And then I'm gonna write uh, BL here for the black one. Yeah, I'm nervous. Guess we can always start over. All right, as I say, this is where the rubber meets the road here. Get this all lined up.
I'll finish by tightening up with stitches up here. Very nice. Yep, that's what I'm looking for. You want to make sure they wouldn't shake out. They're in there nice and tight. They'll be slightly tighter by the time I get done stitching them. Just curious if he puts them either way, if they'll work. And I think they will. They do fit better the proper way or the way they're fitted. They do have a little bit different geometry to the handles. All right. I think when I get here, I'm going to, I'm going to come up in here and around and then back out to here again. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to round this corner to there from there. Once again, I'll round that corner to there. I'm using the four millimeter stitching chisels instead of the five, so they're a little closer together, and I think that'll make this shape in here look a little bit better, less choppy. I know somebody with initials TL. Not gonna fall out, but yet easy to remove. The stitches I think look good, but once I tap them down, they'll be more defined and I think they look better. The other thing that does is it sets them down below the majority of threads below the surface of the leather so that they don't wear just from everyday use. Next, I'm gonna contact adhesive the back of these so I can laminate them together. All right, we'll let that set up and we'll put those together. So we've got them uh, laminated together. I think we're really, really looking good here. I'm not gonna shake out of there. If you drop it, I think it's pretty well protected. It, it could land this way flat, but that's the meaty part of it. If it lands like this, it's not gonna hit the tips or the ends of the handle. 
Yeah, so uh, I think it looks pretty doggone good. So I, I uh, did just a rough sanding here. I need to finish my corners off down here. We'll do an edge on it. So that's what's next. see what size we want I think that's pretty good Once I get this burnished the first time, I'll let the water dry out of it. I'll give it a sanding with some finer sandpaper, and then I'll burnish it all again. And that'll help give me a nice, a nice edge finish. I talked about flaring this out some, but I think that's gonna happen over time. I'm gonna leave it the way it is. It'll take a little bit more careful entry the first first uh, few times using it, but I think it'll mold very nicely to uh, the tool here over some time. And it'll get nice uh, patina on it, higher wear on some of these areas than others. So I'm gonna oil it and uh, yeah, we're getting there. I know, I keep saying that. I'm using neat foot oil. Uh, I know people say they use olive oil. There's nothing wrong with using olive oil as well. Uh, at least that's what I've been told. I'm not a fan of using it. It just concerns me that if it's stored away in a drawer somewhere, will it get smelly and rancid like, uh, you know, like olive oil can do. Tell me, doesn't that look nice? The tan coat that I'm gonna use on here is porous enough that you can oil through it. So you're able to add oil to this. So here we go. It's not quite finished, but mostly I'll put a clear on it. I think it's really a pretty classy looking uh, tool holder for some fairly precise pliers. Uh, nice friction fit. Maybe if you tap it hard, you can tap it out of there, but you're not shaking it out. And um, Nice friction fit. I think it's a nice classy looking tool holder. Maybe you've got a unique tool that you need uh, something made for. The goal was to improve on this. And uh, I think you would agree we did. We've got, um, uh, inch and a 16th up here at the widest area. Uh, less than an inch down here where these handles are here. 
two and seven eighths by five and a quarter, just like we talked about. Uh, once the oil's had a chance to soak in, I may put one more coat of oil on it. We'll put tan coat on it and I'll get you some pictures when it's all finished there. Thanks for being along today. Please like, share, and subscribe.